Okay, now let's start doing state transition logic. The hardest state transition logic is the set reset coil, or the pulse rising edge, pulse falling edge. If I want to do something like when I hit button 0, the red light turns on, when I hit button 1, the red light turns off, that would be the set reset coil. Here I'm going to turn on output 0, the red LED. On the next rung, I will clear the red LED. And if you like, you can just have a alias over here just to make it easier to figure out what's going on. This is the red LED, yellow LED, green LED that we're not using, and blue LED. And just for notation, here is input A, B, C, C, D, or red on, red off. There's the red LEDs being set or cleared. My input then, I'll have button 0, turn on the red LED. That's input 0, labeled as red on. And the second button, button 1, turn off the red LED. If we compile, and download. You can now do the set reset flip flop. And so if I hit button zero, that turns on the red LED. When I release it, it stays on. That's the set flip flop. The red LED was set and it remains set. When I hit button one, that clears the re red LED. Once cleared, remains cleared. So this is turn on, remain on, turn off, remain off. Turn on, remain on, turn off, remain off. Okay, so let's do a ring counter. Suppose I want to have a four element ring counter. Hit a button, I'm just going to count one, two, three, four. Or another way of thinking of that is I'm going to add coins to a vending machine. When I get to one, two, three coins, I'm ready to dispense a pop. I'm going to start over. So I have four different states. To have four states, I need two flip flops, A and B. I'll define the states to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. When I add a coin, I'm going to go from state 0, 0 to 0, 1. Another coin, go to 1, 1, meaning two coins. Another coin goes to 1, 0. At that point, I'm ready to dispense a pop. When I hit the pop button, meaning I've selected the pop, I'll go back to zero coins. To implement that, if I'm in state zero, zero, right here, I do not want to set flip-flop A. So I have set A is zero, don't set. I don't care what happens to clear. If I clear an already cleared flip-flop, it's still cleared. On state zero, one, right here, if I add a coin, I will now set flip-flop A. So that becomes true if I add the coin. When I set it, I don't want to clear it. But if I'm in state 1, 1, I want to stay in state 1 for A. So don't clear it. I don't care what happens to set. If I'm in state 1, 0, down here, I want to clear flip-flop A if I add a pop. So if I add a pop, I then I'll clear it. and don't set. That should be a zero. So the logic for set A would be coin and don't care. Set A if I add a coin and B is true. To reset A, the logic would be if I add a pop and B is false. Doing similar logic for flip-flop B, I'll wind up with this logic. So now, now let's implement that with ladder diagram, ladder logic. I'm going to have two states, A and B. In this case, these are local variables. I'll have local variable labeled A. Try it again. 
again. And a local variable B. So this will be set A, reset A. And I'm also going to have likewise on B. I'll have set B. and reset B. Now the logic for A is A is set if I add a coin and B is true. So an AND would be 2 in series. So if I add a coin, which is input right here, let's define these inputs to be coin, and this one will be pop. If I add a coin, and B is true, this is a local variable called B, I'll set A. If I add a pop, and B is true, make that a pop and B is false, I'll then reset A. So I add a pop. which is one of the I.O. pins at a pop. And B is false. I will reset A. So doing likewise for set B and reset B, I have these outputs. To debug your program, let's have A and B tied to two I.O. pins. So let's add another rung. We have two more rungs. And I'll just say that A is going to be tied to the red LED, just so I can see what's going on. And B will be tied to the yellow LED, again, just so I can see what's going on. Okay, with that, let's try to compile and download our program. Here we compile. Compiled, now entering debug mode. Okay, so here's the logic. Now if I hit the push button, button zero for coin, I go in state one zero. If I hit button one, to dispense a pop, I then get a pop after one coin. Coin, pop. If you look on the display what's happening, I had a coin, suddenly jumps to one zero, which was three coins, at a pop. Momentarily got a pop. What's happening here is these are level switches. When I add a coin, it's executes the program every 10 milliseconds. I've added a coin, it then says go to state 1. 10 milliseconds later, the coin is still being added, go to state 2. 10 milliseconds later, the coin is still added, go to state 3. If I add a single coin, it's just going to sit there and say, after 30 milliseconds, I've added 3 coins. Instead of being a level switch, I might want to make that a pulse. I'm going to add a coin to send a single pulse that will send me to state 1, um, thus avoiding the problem of adding a single coin, sending you to state 3, saying I've got three coins. So here I've replaced the inputs with rising edge inputs. What that does, this is a program. It executes the first line, then the second line, the third line. When I add a coin, momentarily, for 10 milliseconds, this goes high. It then it goes low from that point onward. Now with the edge trigger devices, it still doesn't work. As I hit the coin button, I've added one coin, I'm now in state zero, 01. That's correct. Add another coin, I'm now in 10. Added three coins. 
Spins a pop. One coin. Three coins. Dispense. What's happening is this is a program. When I execute the first line of code, I add a coin. It goes into zero one. Once I'm in zero one, this is true. I'll add a coin that sets A. Once A is set, it then comes down to here and says, hey, I've added a coin and A is now set. The problem is it does line by line. The first line of code changes the condition for the fourth line of code. To avoid that, we need a dummy state. So here I've added some states. I went into the diagram, added two more states, z a, z b, that means the next value of a, next value of b. When I change these, these will be the next value of a and b, so as I execute the program, a hasn't changed yet. At the very end, I then say the next value of a becomes a, the next value of b becomes b, and that turns on the red and yellow lights. So now with those dummy states, I can now add coins and see it go from state 0, 0 over here. Add one coin, become 0, 1. Second coin, 1, 1. Third coin, 1, 0. I keep adding more coins. It says thank you, but nothing else happens. Now when I dispense the pop, I go back to state 0, 0. One coin, two coins, three coins, dispense. Here I'm using the relays to show the states of A and B. That helps in debugging the program. If I now want to change it so that I have the lights turn on as a bar graph, I've got zero coins, one coin, two coins, three coins. I can add some more logic. To get a bar graph to turn on, the blue LED turns on if I'm in any state other than zero, zero, meaning I've got one, two, or three coins. Green LED turns on when I'm in state two coins, three coins, the yellow LED turns on only when I'm in three coins. So here be the logic for red, green, and blue. Here's the ladder, ladder diagram. A or B turns on blue, A turns on green, A B bar turns on yellow. Compiling and downloading. And going into debug mode, just because I kind of enjoy debug mode. To view, full screen. Now you can see what's happening. As I add a coin, I go one coin, two coins, three coins, pop. One coin, two coin, three coins, pop. One, two, three, pop. So there you have a ring counter. Doing state transition logic using programmable logic controllers. Uh, there are other ways to do that. We'll cover that in another lecture. But anything you did in 275 with flip-flops and state transition logic, you can also do with a PLC.